Hi there and a warm welcome to day six of 10 ways, 10 writing days with me, Maria Franklin. And you're halfway now through the writing challenge. So well done if you're keeping up and following the videos day by day. And you should now have five uh, write, written responses under your belt. Uh, and I do think these writing challenges are great just for developing the all important writing habit that we writers do need to have uh, a daily habit if, if, if uh, possible. It's very easy to get out of the rhythm and routine of writing if you do let too many days elapse, believe me, I know. Uh, right, okay, so day six and uh, today we're going to explore 10 ways to create an atmospheric setting and as always there will be a little writing task at the end of this. Okay, so firstly, um, choose a setting in which, which is in keeping with the, the genre that you enjoy writing. So whether you're working on a long project on a, a, at the moment, or it might be that you're a writer that's drawn uh, towards writing in a particular way. So it might be that you write lots of autobiographical accounts uh, from your own life, or it might be that you prefer to make up uh, stories. Uh, it might be that you enjoy writing poetry and uh, this uh, will certainly feed into that as well. So um, for certain genres um, like romance or crime, we need a real life uh, setting, something that would exist somewhere. Uh, if you're a fantasy writer or a sci-fi writer, um, and I would suggest you go back and look at my uh, course that I put out last month called uh, Write a Collection of Short Stories in 30 Days, where, which takes all these genres apart one by one and it supports you to, to write a short story in each genre. So fantasy and sci-fi require something different in terms of setting. So again, um, just as to follow on from yesterday's writing prompt, you can work from pictures uh, to do this or just from your own imagination. So if, you, if you're if you an autobiographical writer, then you would choose something from your own life. If you're a fiction writer, you would choose something, a setting uh, within the sort of genre in which you're accustomed to writing. Uh, and if you're a poet, you would probably use a real life setting as well. Okay, so that's number one. Uh, so you're choosing your setting first. Uh, number two, use all the senses to evoke the setting in which you're writing. Uh, so often as writers, we focus on sight, what we can see around us, uh, but also really get into the setting that you're trying to bring alive for your reader. So bring in smell, which is uh, particularly evocative. Uh, certainly sound. Um, uh, taste and and touch so that that uh, um, the feeling of, of fabrics and texture and how the the place makes you feel um, or, or or would it uh, make your characters feel if you're writing in a fictional way so that's two making sure you bring a set into life through all your senses uh, number three of, of ten ways to create an atmospheric setting is to use emotion. Uh, so use the relationship between character, whether that's you as a real life character or a fictional character. Use the relationship between character and place. So how does the place make the character feel? Uh, that's particularly uh, important and really helps connect uh, readers when you're putting your work in front of an audience. Number four, tip four um, of, of ten ways to create an atmospheric setting. Um, don't just do an information dump of setting where you write one great big long paragraph of, of description of the setting because that's the surefire way, uh, way to turn a reader off, to send them to sleep. So rather drip feed little nuances and little bits of information about your setting at particular times through your story. So the, the longer you, your your piece is, uh, the more room and scope you've, you've got for this. But even in uh, a short story, don't just dump all that information in one paragraph. Just space it out and allow the, the reader to to build a, a gradual picture. 
okay so number five and th this is something I love to do is if possible when you're writing about a setting really immerse yourself uh, within it um, so go to the place in, in which you're writing and, and really feel the atmosphere around you so of course we're a little bit prohibited at the moment because we can't go to too many places um, but for instance I've uh, just set um, a novel in a town called uh, Bempton on the Yorkshire East Coast and I have been there um, but not recently so I brought it back to life by using books and the internet and on the internet you can find videos and pictures and and reviews from people who've been there and all of that you can feed back into your writing so we've got a great tool in the internet so even if we're wanting to set something in a setting that's at the other end of the world we can still uh, get closer to it uh, with with the internet of course it's easier to write from a setting that you've already experienced but it's not always necessary nowadays uh, number six, uh, use the best words possible in your descriptions, you know, instead of the usual. So um, if you're going to use a word like big, for example, think of alternatives you could use instead of big. So huge and vast and uh, small, for instance, we'd have you know, minuscule or tiny or pokey to describe uh, a, a room. So we've got, uh, for those of you who've got a thesaurus uh, or use the synonyms function on your, on your, on your word uh, uh, processor or use, uh, use Google search synonyms for a particular word and you'll get lots of alternatives. So don't just go for the obvious. Uh, you'll create a much richer reading experience by really experimenting there. Uh, number seven, similarly to this, um, metaphor and simile used sparingly in your writing, so just the old one every now and again uh, can produce really great imagery. Um, so uh, one way of, of producing uh, imagery is to say something like the sunlight filtered through the window because it gives a, a reader a, a really uh, immediate sense of, of, of the, the room in which they're inhabiting but metaphor and simile too can be used so something is like or something is um, so don't don't forget about the use of metaphor and, and simile within your settings as well uh, number eight um, so seeing um, a character in uh, showing a character in your writing really engaging with a setting can bring it to life so just about how they move around the setting so not just we we mentioned earlier about how they feel about being there but how they sit how they move how they open and close things how how they see things um, can be really evocative and bring that setting uh, more to life uh, number nine is to use aspects such as darkness and temperature and they can be really evocative and, and you know, really heighten your reader's experience and number 10 is to use items in the setting to create a sense of error so uh, for example if you were setting a, a scene uh, back in my childhood which is the uh, 70s and uh, early 80s you'd be using things like a, a twin tub or words like pantry um, to to describe the setting there's the, those are just two off the top of my head I'm sure you can think of many more if you're the same generation as me okay so that's 10 ways uh, to create an atmospheric setting so lots of ideas there I hope you found that useful uh, so your task for today is to bring all that in or uh, as much of it as you possibly can in order to write about a favourite setting now some of you might have already taken a setting option when we were back in uh, day one's video where one of the prompts was to to write about a setting but this is totally focused on setting now this day six video so choose a favourite setting either from memory 
or, or, or create one um, and and write a, uh, just create that setting bring it to life you could do this as a postcard a wish you were here postcard to somebody who's never visited or experienced the place in which you're about to describe and and bring to life for us uh, so if you're posting into the Facebook group if you do have a picture that goes along with it then feel free to include that uh, to really give us something to hang it on to but remember in normal writing you wouldn't have that available as a prop so that's a lovely enhancement in the Facebook group but we need to really be able to bring it to life without a picture as well okay so enjoy today's uh, activity and I'll see you tomorrow same time same place for some more bye for now